Prostate cancer is the second leading cause of cancer death uh, for men, uh, behind only lung cancer. Um, and so in order, right, it goes for men, uh, it's, it's lung, prostate, colon, pancreas. Um, the thing that kind of stands out to me is we have great tools of detection for prostate cancer. And based on that, I guess it's a little surprising to me that it is still the second leading cause of cancer death in men. So one of the things I hope to be able to do by the end of this final part of our discussion is get a better sense of what an individual can do to flip the odds in their favor. Because you've probably heard me say this before, I don't think anybody should ever die of colon cancer right. for the same reason. We have remarkable tools of detection and, um, and we also have a very predictable pathogenesis where we must go from a polyp. We must go from an adenoma to a carcinoma. Yes. And we can detect the presence of the adenoma because it is outside the body effectively. So just to bring it back old school to where we first met, obviously that would be the Halsteadian theory for how cancer would spread, right? And that would be a stepwise from a localized, non-invasive to an invasive tumor to a regionally advanced and then metastatic. metastatic yeah. And colon follows that algorithm pretty well. There are obviously always, you know, the cases that you can't, you know, the, that, that are yeah, out, sure, outliers. Sure, there are polyps but, that are very difficult to detect. And but like that. in general, I would say that, yes, it, I agree with everything you're saying. And I would agree that on average, prostate cancers follow a similar Halsteadian spread. Halsteadian theory of spread, as opposed to Bernard Fisher and the Fisherian spread, which I think which is, is the breast cancer breast model. Cancer. Yep. Exactly. So yes, 100% agree with you that prostate cancer is on average um, 250 to 260,000 new diagnoses this last year. So a lot um, will follow a, a uh, more of a Halsteadian spread. Now remember, um, if you keep that in mind and you're the math guy, not me, if you do this, just model it, 250 to 260,000 new diagnoses, 34,000 deaths. So yes, on average, we are picking up cancers, but on average, if you look at the ratio of cancers diagnosed to cancer deaths, that ratio is pretty It's favorable. much better yes. than the other cancers. That's right. Conversely, to put pancreatic cancer in terms like that, of the people diagnosed with adenocarcinoma of the pancreas, about 95% of those people will experience lethality within five years. Exactly, so we have that in our favor. Yes. And so yes, what keeps me up and gets me up in the morning and excited is to understand and identify what it is about the individuals who develop prostate cancer that is you know, localized and you know, doesn't have a lethal potential and how do we better attack those subset of individuals that will ultimately die from their prostate cancer. So lots of progress, even since when we last talked, but yes, big picture, it is still a real issue. Mm -hmm.